After more than 20 years of brutal civil war in northern Uganda, a tenuous peace has finally settled over the land. In the wake of the war, hundreds of thousands of displaced persons have returned to their homes only to find them littered with grenades, RPGs, landmines, and other explosive remnants of war. In Uganda's far north, the Uganda Mine Action Center, a project supported by the Danish Demining Group and the United Nations Development Program, works tirelessly to clear large minefields in a remote and mountainous region along the border with South Sudan. During heavy rains, the roads leading to this area are nearly impossible to navigate, adding an additional level of difficulty to the clearance process. This place has been a war area for the last 20 years. The civilians around here were hit by mines, their animals were killed, and so forth. Safe mine clearance work is tedious, requiring deminers to spend lengthy periods of time on their hands and knees checking hazardous ground for tripwires, hand clipping dense vegetation, and meticulously examining any readings found by their highly sensitive metal detectors. In ideal conditions, each deminer can clear approximately 10 square meters of ground per day. And another one is there, the other side. Yeah. So that was one, two. This there was one? Yeah. The second one is yeah, there? Yeah. Is the third one is that it's one? Here. And then the other one is down there. So it's <coughs> I come from eastern Uganda, mm -hmm. Kapchoro. Okay. I have a woman, I have two kids. I always worry. Mm -hmm. They swear because if they lose me, then nobody will take care of them. The work is too slow, but we need to go slow because in a minefield, we don't hurry. If you hurry, then you will be hurrying to die. Given their extremely remote locations, the base camps of UMAC clearance operations along the border must be resupplied with basic necessities. Each week, trucks carrying supplies arrive from Kitgum Town, the nearest population center, which is approximately two hours south of the base camps. Under escort by local defense units of the Uganda People's Defense Force, or UPDF, locals from the surrounding areas assist UMAC staff with the movement and portage of water, rice, beans, soap, gasoline, and other goods needed by the deminers. Right now, we're at the roadhead. This is as far as we can take the vehicles. The supplies come up to here. You can see there's a lot of local people here willing to, to carry it. The reason there's so many is that um, one man gets hired and he brings his family and they all do it together. And fish? There no, you have fish? Uh, not yet. Yeah. Yeah, we have not given them by day. They have given six fish here. Yeah. Possa is not this there. This one is for this people. For this one. Sierra Richard. Sierra Richard. The logistical side of UMAC's clearance operations has created employment opportunities for dozens of local residents, many of whom live as subsistence farmers. The clearing of paths and roads, portage of goods and general support measures has created a much needed influx of money into the local economy. Additionally, UMAC's clearance of roads for the demining operation has enabled other NGOs to gain access to these formerly off-limits areas. In some cases, accessing the minefields and their clearance base camps requires hours of hiking into rugged and unforgiving terrain. And we're 2,000 meters up here now, even though it doesn't look like it. And there's another 1,000 meters worth of mountain if you wanted to, to get to the highest part of it, 1,500 meters, you know. That's no small hillock. The land is sparsely populated, although with violence on the decline, more and more former residents return to these mountains each month. Their recent return is evidenced by densely overgrown footpaths that connect small hillside communities. Life for the deminers assigned to these clearance operations is basic. Far from civilization, their days are devoted entirely to the clearance and its related tasks. They handle equipment repairs, maintenance, and most support-related requirements on their own. Their food is basic, their days are long, and their work is difficult. Yeah, the other mine field, Micha, yeah. is this one, uh, is this slope here. Yeah. Because this one is in and yeah, yeah. it is that top. Uh -huh. Yeah, and this one is the other Micha mine field. Okay, yeah. so it's this one here? Yeah, that one yeah. there. And then 
this one here, this, this lobe here. Where we're walking now. Yeah, where we are working now. In Agoro, high in the mountains, team leader Alex Kiboto oversees 15 deminers in the toughest terrain of any clearance operation currently underway in Uganda. That area. Yeah. Even when we are here, we had a, a blast. They were saying that, oh, could you come and pick the, the, the animal that's got it? They said, no. Yeah. Let it rot there. Yeah. <laughs> they was coming in that yeah, it has eat an animal in that hen. Say that no, let it be. Did you hear it? Yeah, we hear it. Yeah. Every in the camp they heard about it, the blast. Yeah. Hmm. This mine here like uh, a yeah. this no. This little cartridge case will cost a D miner an hour of his day. Just discrediting it, because it'll it'll give the detector a reading. Where the detector gets a reading, you have to investigate and find out what that reading is. Whether it is a nail or something or a scrap, you have to pick it before you go ahead. It's not easy, <laughs> it's a difficult job to do. Each morning of mine clearance begins with a safety and progress briefing, reminding the clearance team of safety procedures before entering the live minefields. And all uh, uh, the perimeter boundary of the of the admin area is marked in white, indicating this is a safe area. As UMAC deminers work to clear the minefields, a large staff of mine risk education, or MRE specialists, travel to contaminated areas, providing critical information to people who may encounter dangerous items during their daily routines. Every day, they board motorcycles and brave hazardous roads in order to reach internally displaced persons camps or return sites for those who are in the process of moving home. In addition to providing education on hazardous explosive items, UMAC's MRE staff also conduct baseline surveys in order to gauge contamination levels, community awareness of the issue, and progress made on clearance efforts. MRE coordinator Christopher O'Mara oversees the MRE team and offers hands-on support during their sessions. My action is based on information that are found on the ground. So DDG is carrying out this baseline survey to get to know exactly the gravity of mines and UXOs in the communities that we are carrying out mine risk education. The sessions aim to inform civilians of all ages about the risks of landmines and other unexploded ordnance. Participants are encouraged to develop familiarity with common UXO and advised to report any suspicious items to local authorities for safe disposal. I am Mon John, the M MRA teacher. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and so how did your session here today go? The session was very successful, there was a very good turn up and there was community interaction generally. Mm -hmm. So we believe our message has been delivered to the right people. Aggressive mine risk education in war affected areas of northern Uganda have led to a notable decline in mine and UXO related accidents. With contamination still at high levels, the work amounts to a lifeline for community members. We are preparing for end of day demolition as we found the mine at 10 20 in the morning. Now it's evening and we have stopped work, so we are going to demolish that mine right now. Now we have one of the miners, the team, team leader has gone there, he's connecting, the, 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 he's connecting now the bomb to that mine, so that we can fire in a safe distance. Now he's recording the time. International mine clearance standards focus heavily on safety procedures, which require that safe distances be maintained during potentially hazardous tasks. When these standards are observed, mine clearance and UXO disposal can be successfully completed with no loss of human life. Time for firing! Time for firing! I'm firing now!
I've really given myself a real sacrifice and uh, I want this minefield to be out of this place. That's uh, what I, I, I intend. To make life easier here and to try and, and keep everyone supplied and morale up, you know? Yeah. But at the end of the day, we don't...